Okay, so we've done addition and subtraction. Now let's do some multiplication and division. So the multiplication property of equations. Given the equation A equals B, kind of like we had before, the following is an equivalent statement. Now we can take and multiply both sides by the same value. We can multiply by C. Okay, so you know maybe we, we multiplied by two here, so we multiply by two here, and it's still equivalent. So this says we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number to simplify the equation or divide without changing the equation. So we could have a over c equals b over c. So we can divide the same way. We can divide by two in this case. Maybe we have a over two equals b over two. Okay. So as long as we do it to both sides, we're okay. So what we're going to do here is solve for the variable in two ways. First, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, and then we're going to divide by the number. All right, so well, what does that mean? Well, let's say we have a here. So we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So we start with a 6x equals 24, and we want to solve for x. So the number out in front is 6, so the reciprocal is 1 sixth. So we're going to multiply by 1 over 6. So if we do it here, guess what? We have to do it here as well. So now let's go ahead and start canceling. That goes to 1. That goes to 1. Well, one of those goes in here, and we have four of those. So that says x is equal to just 4. Now, what's the other way? Well, we can take 6x equals 24. This is part way b, just divide. And we can divide by 6 divide by 6, and we get the same kind of thing. You know, that goes to 1, this goes to 1, that goes to 4, and we get the same answer there as we did here. So both of them show that we get x equals 4. Now, our check, we can take 6 times 4 equals 24. Well, 6 times 4 is 24, so that does check. Okay. Now, for the next one, we have a negative 5x equals 35. So for A, we're going to take and have the negative 5x equals 35. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the, we have a 5x here, negative 5x here, so we're going to have a negative 1 fifth here. So we're going to multiply this side by a negative 1 fifth because we want a positive x. So we have to get rid of that negative. So negative times negative is positive. And now we can kind of show the cancellations. So that cancels that makes it positive that's one that's one <clears throat> now here that's one that's seven and so this one has x equals seven times negative one is negative seven now the other way we can do it here is and if we look at this we have a negative 5x equals 35 divide by a negative five so we're just directly dividing by that whole thing there directly divide by negative 5 there. So that plus plus, that goes to 1, that goes to 1, that goes to 1, that goes to 7. And uh, 7 divided by a negative 1 is x equals a negative 7. Okay. Now check it. Does a negative, five, uh, negative 7 rather times the negative 5 equal a 35? Well, yeah, because remember, we have a negative times a negative is positive, and 5 times 7 is 35, and so it checks. Okay, And so this is uh, two ways you can look at it. Some people like to multiply by the reciprocal. Some people like to divide. Now, this one is handy when you have a fraction up front here. And so instead of a 6, maybe a 2 thirds. So when you multiply by the reciprocal 3 halves, that's easier than saying 2 thirds divided by 3 halves, because that, that's, that's too, not too nice. And so this works best on the first one when you have fractions involved with the variable. And the second one works better if you just have you know whole numbers. You can just divide it out nicely like that. All right, so here we go. Here's another one. So we have a, so we have x over negative 7 equals negative 3. So this is really a 1 7th, a negative 1 7th. So if we multiply by, and well, I guess I put the neg at times in the wrong place, but a negative 7 over 1, that will get rid of this. 
So the fraction is kind of written in a, a strange way. So we could really write that negative 1 7th x equals negative 3. And so then we see it as the fraction like I was talking about. And so then we know, well, that's 7 over 1 has to be negative. And so that's why we did what we did here. So we have to also multiply by a negative 7 over 1. And so when we do that, let's cancel stuff. That becomes a plus. Those cancel become 1s. Now this one, we have a negative times a negative, so it's positive. And so then our final answer is x equals 21. Now the other way, um, let's see. Divide by the number, OK. And so here we have x divided by negative 7 equals negative 3. So we're going to divide by a negative 1 7th. So we're going to divide that by a negative 1 7th. Now, if we write that as a, 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 a long format, what we have is x over negative 7 divided by a negative 1 over 7. And then that's equal to a negative 3 divided by a negative 1 over 7. Now we have to do the keep the first one the same times the reciprocal equals keep the first one the same times the reciprocal. And now we see that, you know, that's plus, that's plus, that's one, that's one, that's positive after that. And then we have three times seven again. And so we get X equals 21. So the, this is why I said when we have fractions, it's best to just multiply by that reciprocal and be done with it. It's a lot harder to divide by those fractions uh, than it is, you know, just multiplying by reciprocals. So you end up just multiplying by the reciprocal when you get done all the way. But, you know, this is uh, kind of to show you both ways on all kinds of problems. All right, so let's pause there and come back for more.